can you see what I'm doing here I'm putting up my Christmas lights to put up means to hang something so as to allow it to be displayed for everyone to see you might put up a painting you can put up a flag you can put up some Christmas lights we can also use put up to mean withstand you can bear something annoying or upsetting occurring you put up with it of course if you can't stand it we can say that you can't put up with it we can also use put up to mean the action of allowing someone to stay in your home overnight to put someone up for the night my brother said he can put me up for a couple of nights so as you can see there are many uses for the phrase put up you can also put up your feet which means to relax and take it easy I hope you are feeling relaxed now because it's Sunday afternoon here in the UK and this is live English Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm assuming that you are all applauding at the moment. So thank you very much for your applause. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And one or two of you are even throwing flowers at me. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I'm back, baby hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i really really hope so so here we are a new month is here we are now into december december has arrived and of course for many people december is a very busy month because it means that a lot of people will be preparing to celebrate not only Christmas but also the new year as well so if you are one of those people preparing to celebrate Christmas we have a lot of fun things to come your way during December including today in fact because today is Sunday the 3rd of December 2017 just another four weeks of this year to go and then we will jump headfirst into 2018 what will next year have in store for us well a year from now I will be able to tell you <laughs> so here we go oh my goodness and of course as usual the first thing we have to do is take a look outside the window what was the view like this morning well here it is I must say it was very murky this morning very very damp very wet and very misty or we can also say murky murky so as you can see in the distance the visibility is not very good there is a lot of moisture in the air we had some cold weather and then we had some warm weather which has caused lots and lots of rain to fall unfortunately so that is the view this morning i don't know what the view is like where you are because well basically i'm not where you are but i'm glad you are here anyway and of course last week everyone in the uk got very excited do you know why can you guess why we all got excited last week well i will tell you the reason why is because we had some snow yes and just to prove it look this is actually the view last thursday and if you look in the distance you can see some snow on the mountains in the distance and those mountains are actually in wales they are very high very 
high mountains and because of that because we had a lot of cold weather last week the snow has fallen on the mountains and there it is that is actually the view from my house from my bedroom window another view <laughs> and as you can see once again the mountains in the distance they are covered with snow and that happened last thursday and apparently in london they also had a lot of snow as well so many people in the uk getting very excited because that's what we do you see we always get very excited when the weather changes some people complain about it whilst others get very excited i'm one of those people who gets very excited a little bit later on we are going to take a look at one of my english lessons where i talk all about snow and you will have a chance to join me on a lovely snowy walk <laughs> just to prove how cold it was would you like to have a look at my frozen bird bath because that's how cold it was last week here it comes can you see one of the bird baths in my garden has actually frozen over look at that look at that it's actually frozen so there is a layer of ice on the top and of course i always like to break the ice i always like to break it so the birds can drink the water although i have a strange feeling that that water needs changing it needs cleaning because it's full of leaves but there you can see the ice on the bird bath and not only that but also the other bird bath as well was frozen almost solid and there you can see once again the ice forming on the birdbath fortunately it wasn't that cold so it was only slightly cold it was about minus two <laughs> which is still cold of course but there the icy weather we had quite a cold week last week very very chilly talking of last week you may have noticed that i wasn't here last sunday i was supposed to be here but due to one or two problems mostly technical <laughs> i wasn't here last week so can i just say i'm very very sorry i'm so sorry for not being here last week i'm really really sorry for that uh, i couldn't help it i had a few problems here at the studio lots of things to try and sort out so that's the reason why i wasn't here last sunday so once again can i please apologize for that winter is here it's official and just to prove it in my garden at the moment there are some lovely flowers some lovely flowers pink flowers that always come out every winter now there is a slight problem here and i'm hoping that someone out there will know something about flowers because i have no idea what these flowers are so these particular flowers or should i say this particular plant i don't know what it is so if there is anyone out there who is a plant expert could you please let me know what this particular plant is because i have done some research i've been looking i've been trying to find what this particular plant is called and i can't find it anywhere so if anyone out there knows what this particular plant is called please let me know because i can't find the name of it anywhere <laughs> and to be honest with you it's really bugging me so if anyone out there is an expert on plants or flowers if you are a big fan of gardening maybe you know what this particular flower is because i don't know but the only clue i have is that it only comes out during the winter so this particular plant only comes out 
during the winter time so if you know what it is could you please let me know thank you very much that would be lovely of course we have the live chat today it wouldn't be live English without the live chat and of course we have lots of people waiting very patiently thank you very much for being so patient today waiting for me we have Julie G hi Julie nice to see you again welcome once again once again can I say sorry I'm ever so sorry because a lot of people were asking they were saying yeah yeah, Mr. Duncan, where were you last Sunday? We were waiting for you, but you didn't come onto the internet. Where were you? Were you sick? Were you ill? Are you dead? Well, I am here now to reassure you that I'm not ill and I'm definitely, definitely not dead well not yet anyway also Olga is here hello Olga thanks for joining me today Olga is one of my loyal viewers just like Julie is can I say once again a big thank you to my lovely patreon supporters now I don't mention my patreon supporters very often but today I'm going to give them a special mention so can I say thank you once again to my lovely Patreon supporters for your kindness. And there you can see all of the lovely people who help support and help me to do my English lessons by making a monthly donation. Thank you very much to Mika, Julie, Victoria, Lucia, Karel, Constantine, Tatiana, Andrew, Tigran, Sunichi, Esther, Fan, Aziz, Daniel, Julia, Oskrim, Pinokova, Michael, Oleg, Carmen, and last week I had a new Patreon supporter, Dimitro. Thank you very much for joining me on my lovely list of Patreon supporters. And of course, you can also support me if you want to help my work continue every month thank you so much for helping me it really is very lovely of you i do appreciate it from from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you so much khan Jewin is here khan Jewin, hello to you and also simona kane also we have maria oh Maria thanks for coming back I'm very sorry for not being here last week but I did had a few problems I had quite a few technical problems last week Mr Marie Gank Marie Gank Kumar is here thank you very much for saying hello Tias Tia says Mr Duncan we missed you oh thank you very much for missing me last week I wasn't here but don't worry I am back and I will be with you every Sunday during December and don't forget during December Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve both fall on Sunday and I will be here on Christmas Eve and I will also be here on New Year's Eve as well yes and there are five Sundays in December so you have lots and lots of live English to come your way during this month I've been taking care of my health a lot of people thought I was sick last week but I'm not last week actually I did go to the doctors last week but not because of my health but because I had to go and have my flu vaccination so every year around about this time I always have my flu vaccination to make sure that I don't become ill with influenza and of course flu is a very serious illness especially for people who are over a certain age like me 
<laughs> so last week I had my flu vaccine. My arm was a little painful, but that was it really. It was it was fine and I feel great now. So have you had your flu vaccine? Do you ever have vaccines where you are? something to talk about today also we have the mystery idioms coming today don't worry i haven't forgotten the mystery idioms will be here very soon also some questions to ask today some interesting questions are you still in touch with people you went to school with or anyone from your childhood now i think this is a very interesting question because i was thinking the other day I'm not in touch with anyone from my school days. I have a couple of people on my Facebook friend list who I was at school with, but I never really get in touch with them. I never contact them, even though they are on the list. So this is one of the questions I'm asking today, a general question for us to talk about. Are you still in touch with people or with anyone you went to school with or anyone from your childhood now i think in certain countries definitely in china people do like to stay in touch with their classmates and they do have normally frequent reunions so that is one of the questions also today we are talking about my favorite subject oh food yes so today we are talking about food the question today referring or relating to food do you eat too much what do you think now i know this is a very private thing some people feel very awkward talking about their their eating habits but i have to say i'm going to be very honest i will be honest right now and say that i sometimes eat too much sometimes at night maybe i'm feeling a little bit lonely i quite often go into the kitchen and i have a little snack or maybe i eat something sweet or maybe i have a little bit of junk food to comfort me so i'm not afraid to admit that sometimes i do like to eat food as comfort i think a lot of people do this certainly if they have nothing to do maybe they're feeling a little lonely or or maybe bored they go into the kitchen and they grab a snack so what about you what do you do would you say that you eat too much and of course what food do you enjoy and as i suppose another question this is a very personal question so maybe you don't want to answer this question but do you eat too much have you ever been on a diet now once again i'm not afraid to admit that last year i did go on a diet because i was putting on a lot of weight <laughs> a lot a lot of people noticed that I was getting a little bit fat in certain places around my stomach area and also around my face I was getting very fat so last year I did actually go on a diet I'm not joking I did so I had a diet last year and I lost around about a stone in weight so yes and to be honest it did do me a lot of good I did feel better after losing the weight so have you ever been on a diet we have some oh we have some live chat donations coming in on the super chat thank you very much for that i'm not sure who they are from let's have a look eleanor thank you eleanor eleanor Kukina, and also from i can't read the writing unfortunately but the message here says I was very sad last Sunday because I turned on YouTube and there was no Mr. Duncan. Well, once again, can I apologize? I have had some slight problems with my equipment, namely the computer. So the computer has been playing up. It has been going wrong. There is a slight fault 
with the computer so last week i had a lot of technical problems and sadly i couldn't come on i was hoping that i could get the computer fixed i'm still not sure what the problem is i have no idea what the problem is but you know what it's like technology sometimes it goes wrong it breaks down for no reason whatsoever hi mr duncan from armet hello armet thank you very much for joining me also ahmed is here as well are you happy mr duncan i hope so yes i'm happy i'm so glad to be back i'm really pleased to be with you again on this sunday afternoon it is now coming up to 25 past two we are live in the uk sandra harge is here hello sandra i haven't seen you for a long time thanks for coming back a big howdy from france to you and also to mr steve yes we can't forget mr steve mr steve will be here today live at three o'clock did it get colder in here or is it just me i think it's just you mr steve so <laughs> you know i never get tired of watching that i never i could watch that again and again <laughs> in fact <laughs> i want to watch it again right now mr steve at three o'clock did it get colder in here or is it just me <laughs> there is no way in the world that mr steve is right in the head and some people say the same thing about me marcella is here hi marcella thanks for joining me today hello mr duncan from spain francisco munoz is here or munoz marcella who is watching in argentina a big hello to argentina also aurora aurora ruba is here i feel happy and i feel better because i'm watching your live class thank you very much for that how kind of you i'm sure a lot of people have tuned in today just to see if i'm still alive because a lot of people during the week were really worried they were sending messages to me asking here yeah, mr duncan are you still alive are you okay because you didn't appear last week what happened well i'm here now to prove that i am okay nishant is here hello nishant petro or patro i am now involved with my 10th exams and that is why i am not able to attend all of your live streams don't worry nishant as long as you you appear sometimes so you're here today and that's okay Jamelia oh thank you for joining me today I'm so glad to see you today thank you very much for that and also a couple of more hellos Pedro and also who else should we say hello to oh I know let's say hello to Joris hello Joris I've never seen your name here before it looks like you might be new here are you we have the mystery idioms coming very shortly but first we are going to take a look at one of my english lessons we are going to take a look at one of my lessons a lesson all about my favorite subject food Everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How? Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan. Oh, hello, Mr. Lomax. How are you? What's the problem? Mr. Duncan, I'm hungry. Can I have something to eat, please? 
Of course you can. What would you like to eat? Mm. I would like a big juicy banana, if that's okay. Hmm, banana, eh? Let me see. I've got a banana around here. Ah, there's one. <laughs> one juicy banana. There you go. Is that okay for you? Mm. Thank you very much. Bon appetit. Now then, where was I? Oh yes. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we will look at a common item which is for each of us an important part of our daily life and our means of survival. Today, we will talk about food. It's scrumptious, bumptious, tasty and sweet. It's delicious, nutritious, lots of fun to eat. You can have it hot, you can have it cold. It's easy to munch and it's easy to hold. You can eat it from a plate, you can spoon it from a dish. It's the greatest thing that you can ever wish. It's food, tasty food, scrumptious food, yummy food. It's food. It makes up a large part of our daily routine. Most people love it. Some people get too much of it, while others get too little. It can be both good and bad for you, and we need it to survive. Oh yes, without food, our lives would be very short indeed. The word food is a mass noun, and means any substance that can be consumed and absorbed into the body and has the ability to provide all the necessary energy for us to function and survive. The word food comes from ancient Germanic and in ancient English was closely associated with the word fodder. There are many natural elements contained within food such as calcium, chromium, cobalt, copper, iron, sodium and zinc. It is worth noting that these are present in very tiny amounts, which is lucky for us because the human body only requires a very small daily amount to function properly. Keeping the balance of these elements right is very important, as too much of them is just as bad as too little. Then there is protein, which helps the body to function and stay well maintained. Protein is made up of small organic chemicals called amino acids. These are absorbed from food during digestion and are used to create new proteins and other useful substances that the body requires. Finally, let us not forget one of the most important intakes that the body requires in order to function and survive. Water. Around 60% of your body is made up of water. The water in your body keeps you cool. It helps to keep the joints of your bones soft and supple. It carries nutrients to your tiny skin cells and it helps to carry away all of the waste and toxins which would otherwise build up and cause you to become ill. Water is being constantly used and lost by the body through sweating and going to the toilet. Needless to say, you must drink plenty of water every day. When cooking something, we normally use a verb to describe the way in which it is being prepared. For example, bake a cake boil some potatoes, 
fry an egg, grill some bread, roast a chicken, steam some vegetables, stew some meat. Humans are omnivores. This means we eat meat, fruit and vegetables. However, there are people who do not eat meat at all. Sometimes this is for religious reasons or as a moral stand against the killing of animals for human consumption. We may dislike certain types of food because of its odour or the way it looks. For example, I really dislike mushrooms. <laughs> I do not like the way they smell before and after being cooked. The thought of eating a mushroom makes me feel very unwell. Some people avoid certain food because their bodies are sensitive to it. For example, peanuts and certain seafood, such as oysters or prawns. They have an allergy. They are allergic to it. If they ate some of it, then they may become very sick or even die. The combination of different items intended for eating is called a meal or a dish and these have different names depending on when they are served. The morning meal is breakfast. The midday meal is called lunch and the evening meal can be called dinner or if it is much later supper. Sometimes we may go out to eat food. Perhaps we will go to a restaurant and order some food from the menu. The person who serves you at the table is called a waiter or, if they are female, a waitress. The meal is usually divided into sections. Each one is called a course. First, there is the starter, which is normally a small serving of food, such as soup or salad. Some people do not have a starter, worrying that they may have trouble finishing the main meal. Then, there is the main course, which is the largest part of the meal. Finally, there is the dessert, which can also be called the sweet. This is normally a small portion of ice cream, or hot pudding, or cake. The subject of preparing food is normally called cookery. The group word for all kinds of different cooking styles is cuisine. For example, French cuisine, Greek cuisine, Italian cuisine. A person who studies food and its effect on the body is called a dietitian or a nutritionist. A person who cooks food as a job is called a cook or chef. The word chef comes from the French language and means head. There are many phrases and idioms that relate to food or eating, such as I'll eat him or her for breakfast. I will easily win or beat someone in a contest. It's a piece of cake. It is easy to do. It is no problem. The apple of your eye. Someone you love and care for deeply. Bring home the bacon. Earn money to support a family. Have your cake and eat it. Enjoy both sides of a situation. 
or to want more than you should have. Food for thought. An idea or comment that makes you think about something deeply. Sour grapes. The feeling of bitterness towards someone. We put his rudeness down to sour grapes. Salad days. Your younger days, earlier in life, when things seemed much simpler. Ah. Food, glorious food. Mm -mm. I don't know about you, but I love food very, very much. There it was. It was just some excerpts from my food lesson. The whole food lesson is available on my YouTube channel. In fact, the video, the link to the video is right underneath this live stream so the full version and it's a very long lesson all about food lots of information about food is available underneath this video good afternoon to you if you have just joined me it's mr duncan that's me yes i'm back baby i know i wasn't here last week i have already explained why i had a few technical problems in 20 minutes mr steve will be here live and today we are going to talk about many things one thing in particular one thing in particular mr steve on friday evening was cleaning his car now i was very curious to find out why so i thought it would be a good idea today to put this out to everyone so why is mr steve cleaning his car why is he doing it and here he is look <laughs> cleaning the car making sure that it looks all lovely and shiny and sparkly but why is mr steve cleaning the car i'm very very curious to find out why in fact whilst filming this i was thinking to myself why is mr steve cleaning his car he never normally cleans his car so i can only assume that something very special was about to happen but what was the occasion i will give you the answer later on but where was mr steve going and i will give you a clue I was also going with him <laughs> actually I'm not sure if that's a clue at all <laughs> so there's mr. Steve cleaning his car making it look all shiny and lovely <laughs> a lot of people think that this car is a new car but in fact it isn't mr. Steve has had this car for many many years over seven years he's had this car so it isn't a new car it's actually quite an old car he's had it for over seven years nearly eight years in fact so <laughs> it isn't new but it does look quite new especially when mr. Steve has cleaned it so that is the question why was mr. Steve cleaning his car back to the live chat Navinda Singh is here hello Navinda thank you for joining me today questions we are asking are you still in touch with people you went to school with and Navinda says yes I am still in touch with my school friends also Olga says yes I met my schoolmates last month now I'm not sure if this happens very often here in the UK quite often we tend to lose touch with people 
so quite often people you went to school with or maybe people you worked with in a previous job over time it is possible to to lose contact or to lose touch with your school friends or your former work colleagues so it does happen but I, I have noticed and I did notice this when I was living in China that a lot of people tend to keep in touch with the people they went to school with even people in their 30s and 40s they were still meeting up with people that they went to school with which I always found very fascinating now I must admit I'm not in touch with anyone that I used to go to school with I'm not I don't really contact anyone so I don't think it happens so much here I think maybe in certain cultures it happens more maybe I'm right maybe I'm wrong can I just mention once again that I've had two very generous donations today on the super chat here they are here's one of them so thank you very much thanks a lot so there is one of the super chats the donations that I received today thank you thank you very much thank you very much for your your lovely donation and there it is now on the screen I'm very sorry that I couldn't read your name because my computer wouldn't show the pronunciation so I'm very sorry about that but thank you very much for your very very generous donation and also Eleanor Eleanor as well thank you very much for your generous donation today on the live chat thanks a lot I am very very touched I've also had a nice photograph come in I think this is from Maria I think it might be from Maria let's just see if we can find it <laughs> of course now I won't be able to ah here it is I think this is from Maria and this is a picture of her nativity scene normally some people they create a, sh a small nativity scene and there it is a nativity scene thank you very much I think that was from Maria thank you very much for that very very lovely and if you'd like to send any photographs to me you can my email address also you can follow me on Facebook as well in fact you can find me all over the internet it's Sunday afternoon and we are live on YouTube it's true unless of course you are watching the replay in which case it isn't live but at the moment it is live if you get my meaning we have asked some questions today to do with food do you eat too much food what food do you enjoy Ahmed says I eat too much but my body does not get larger oh, I see you are very lucky there when I was very young when I was a child I could eat anything and I would never put weight on I would never get fat I used to eat chocolate and sweets and loads of food when I was a child but I never put weight on because my my metabolism was very high so I would burn all of the energy very quickly so I would not put weight on but sadly as I got older yes I did start to put weight on and last year as I mentioned earlier I had a diet I went on a diet last year and I managed to lose some weight 
I got rid of my my fat tummy. <laughs> Pedro Belmont says I don't eat too much I eat enough I eat what I need just in the weekends I break my routine well of course you have to give yourself a little treat now and again don't you agree with me I think so so there is nothing wrong with having a little treat Aurora Aurora Ruba says I love sushi sushi oh i see a raw fish it is a japanese delicacy i'm not keen on sushi to be honest I, i'm not keen on the smell because sometimes sushi can can smell very very fishy i'm not very keen on the smell of fish to be honest I think I eat too much says Olga in comparison with other girls I think I should eat less well you know what they say there is a proverb that says a little of what you fancy can do you good so sometimes having a little treat or a little snack there is no harm as long as you don't overdo it everything in moderation moderation i love that word so to have moderation means you have control you don't overdo the things you are doing julie g says i am on a diet right now that's very brave of you to tell me that thanks for sharing that information but i really do like food especially sweets me too but as you saw earlier, there are some types of food that I hate. And one of them, you may have noticed in the video. Can you see that? Oh, dear. It's a mushroom. I hate mushrooms so much. And there you can see one. A lot of people like to have mushrooms in soup or in stew or casseroles or sometimes they eat them with salad I don't like mushrooms at all so that is my my most unfavorite food I hate mushrooms very much what is your favorite food and what is your least favorite food Kimmy Kim says I eat a balanced diet i have a balanced diet balanced but i do love to eat pizza <gasps> yes me too sadly here in much wenlock the place i live in there is no pizza place there is no pizza palace or pizza hut there is nowhere to buy pizza from unfortunately so sadly here in my town we don't have a pizza restaurant or a pizza takeaway restaurant it's not fair i like pizza very much charef charef says i was frightened by mr steve earlier <laughs> what do you mean do you mean this did it get colder in here or is it just me <laughs> yes i agree it is a little frightening the real thing is coming at three o'clock because mr steve will be here but the big question is what was the reason for mr steve cleaning his car he was cleaning his car on friday evening but why what what was the reason for it i will tell you later right now we are going to have a look at the mystery idioms would you like to have a look 10 minutes away from mr steve but i am now going to reveal today's mystery idioms something for you to think about during this and the next hour because i am on for two hours and i am on every sunday from two o'clock 2 p.m uk time don't forget that 
so here we go today's mystery idioms here they come right now here is the first mystery idiom but what is it what is it a well-known phrase in english i will give you a clue it has nothing to do with food <laughs> you'll be pleased to hear and here is the second mystery idiom <laughs> i think this one is easy i think this particular idiom is very easy to guess and the first one once again what are today's mystery idioms if you think you know let me know if you don't know the answer i will reveal the answers at the end of today's live stream and we have something very special coming today we will be turning on the christmas lights the outside christmas lights i am going to turn them on later in the program <gasps> I can't wait so that coming up in the second hour and of course we have mr. Steve coming along today to give us some mystery idioms and I can let you in on a little secret now mr. Steve has already received a Christmas present he has I'll be telling you more about that in the second hour after three o'clock when mr. Steve comes to say hello analytic brain is here hi mr duncan how are things going i hope you are still happy and it is all about english language yes of course no problem and don't forget including today i am with you live five times during december five times including christmas eve and also new year's eve i will be here live with you kimmy kim is here hello kimmy thanks for joining me i have never been on a diet some people diet some people try to lose weight by eating less and sadly many people who go on a diet quite often end up putting weight on later so it isn't an easy thing to do i must admit last year when i went on a diet i found it very very hard to do besides dieting you must also take extra exercise as well and don't forget before you start to go on a diet you must check with your doctor first you must check quite a few people have had their flu vaccines <laughs> including me i had my flu vaccine last week i had the injection in my arm last week to make sure that i don't get the flu hi mr duncan thanks for your wonderful lessons humera humera kaka thank you very much for that it's very kind of you so many people joining me on the live chat pedro i think pedro likes mr lomax very much he is so adorable says pedro belmont i agree with you i think mr lomax is quite adorable even though sometimes he gets very angry with me i don't know why <laughs> aurora says i sent a message because i was very preoccupied preoccupied it's not an easy word to say that preoccupied i was distracted by something oh that something was me that's very nice thank you aurora aurora was preoccupied with me because my lesson apparently is very interesting thanks a lot for that sammy keja says my favorite food is also pizza <sighs> i really like it and of course i love and enjoy your live stream as well thank you sammy for that very kind of you mr steve is just two minutes away the big question as i asked earlier why why is mr steve cleaning his car we will reveal the answer 
later on there was a special reason why mr steve was cleaning his car on friday night all i will say is that he was going somewhere very special and i was going as well <laughs> do you know why mr steve was cleaning his car i'm sure we will find out later mr steve will be here soon igor says the 2018 fifa world cup consists of in group g belgium panama tunisia and also england now if i remember rightly i think england will be playing belgium am i right <laughs> I, I heard it on the news the other night I don't follow football myself, but I remember hearing that England are going to be playing, I think, Belgium in next year's World Cup. Where is it next year? Where is the World Cup next year? Is it Russia? I think it's Russia, isn't it? I'm sure it is. How many meals do you have normally during the day? Normally during the day, we have three meals during the day three meals normally breakfast lunch and evening dinner or quite often if you have it later we call it supper supper if you have a very late meal we call it supper <laughs> still lots of people asking where i was last week where were you mr duncan i had some problems with my computer last week i had some technical problems technical difficulties but this week it would appear that everything is working okay it looks as if everything is going smoothly but all that could change at any moment because you know what's coming next you know what's on the way you know what is about to appear yes of course it's Mr. Steve! Dippy dip 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 December is here and that means that Christmas is on the way. Oh, I am so excited. And I was wondering, because it was very cold last week, I was wondering if it was going to snow. Because it got very cold. We did have a little bit of snow last week. Some snow did fall on the mountains in the distance. Uh, I showed you those at the beginning of today's lesson. So will it snow? Hopefully, if we have time, I will show you a lesson all about snow and we will be going on a snowy walk. But here he is right now. Here is the guy that loves to talk to you live. It is Mr. Steve. Hello. <laughs> hello, Mr. Duncan. And hello, world of English. And uh, thank you once again for asking me to return and give my little input into your English show. That's very nice. And can I just <laughs> ask you, Steve, because you, you it's I, I think it would be fair to say that you are not used to doing this. You are not accustomed to talk to talking live on the internet is that true that is very true so how do you feel just just as i'm about to introduce you how do you actually feel how does it make you feel to know that you are about to go live how do you feel uh, slightly nervous i would say slightly nervous um deep breathing to keep myself calm ah, yes Can the, the... do eight breathing out to eight all sorts of uh methods that people use to stay calm no i uh, it's it's fun it's enjoyable and uh you asked me to do it and i i happily agree to that and it's been how many weeks now well i think it's it's nearly it must be three maybe four months that we've been doing this together now 
that is a long time yes and of course i have been on youtube teaching english for over 11 years i'm not joking i started doing this way back in 2006 and i'm still here today doing it so i am the first i can safely say that i am the first english english teacher on youtube i believe you were i remember you starting i still am i remember you starting all those years ago mm. I've, i'll never catch you up of course now i'm going to show something so so you can relax mr steve i'm going to show something because earlier i was uh, mentioning the fact that you were cleaning the car the other night you were cleaning it and i was very interested to know why you were cleaning it but then i realized mm -hmm. that i was also involved with the thing you were doing so now we are going mm -hmm. to have a look at the answer to the question so why was mr steve cleaning the car here he is do you remember this on friday evening mr steve do you remember i do i suddenly remembered i was cleaning the car and then i looked up and you were filming me that's what i remember <laughs> you were very surprised to see me standing up standing over you with then, the uh with the camera so. but i shouldn't have been surprised because uh to all you viewers out there mr duncan likes to film virtually anything and everything <laughs> well almost so, everything uh, <laughs> almost everything just when you least expect it mr duncan has his camera and he's filming he films everywhere and everything almost 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 everything but you do enjoy filming yes and i was cleaning away i quite enjoyed cleaning the car do, do you find it very therapeutic it's hard work it's actually hard work to clean a car it takes a lot of physical effort so what's the worst part of cleaning the car the wheels uh, and afterwards of course you have to so you can you can you can wash the car but afterwards you have to polish the car as well ah well i don't do that don't you no yeah i i don't polish it i polish it beforehand and then i just spray the water on it all beads off and then i might go for a little drive up the road but i never spend time afterwards getting the water droplets off i think that's oh. that's going a bit too far that, that's that's quite interesting so that that's almost a tip so so you polish the car first and then you wash it well yes i say so after you've washed it you have to polish the car when the car is clean and dry ah, i get you but now. then uh, once it's polished the the dirt comes off very easily and then the water just beads off so you don't really apart from the windows you might have to give them a little a little wipe down but i don't spend time after that because you can guarantee particularly in england as soon as you or anywhere in the uk for that matter <laughs> as soon as you clean the car uh you spend all that effort half an hour perhaps and then it'll rain as soon as you go out on the road then, but then after you've gone about 20 miles the car's virtually as dirty as it was in the beginning that's the only disheartening thing about so, the, so there's nothing car. worse than cleaning your car and then the next day it starts to rain i i, I think mm. i can see your point mm. so let's have a look here is the reason why mr steve was busy cleaning his car the answer is coming right now So for all those who are wondering why Mr. Steve was cleaning his car yesterday, well, the answer is coming right now. We are going to Mr. Steve's mum. We are going to see her. And every time we go to see Mr. Steve's mother, Steve always likes to clean his car so it makes his mummy happy. And that is where we are going right now. We are on our way to see Mr. Steve's mum. Well, it would appear that our journey to Mr. Steve's mum has come to a slight standstill because we are now stuck in traffic. Apparently, in the opposite carriageway, in the other lanes, over the other side of the motorway apparently there's been an accident and it would appear that people are now slowing down to take a look at the accident that's what we think anyway 
When people do this, we call it rubbernecking. People try to look at what has happened, especially if an accident has taken place, because people like to have a look. We call it human curiosity. People get very curious about what is happening, especially when it's something like an accident. So we are moving very slowly now along the motorway, but at least we're still moving. <laughs> Albeit very slowly. So it looks as if we're going to be late arriving at Mr. Steve's mum. I hope she's not angry. <laughs> There's clearly something very dramatic happening ahead. Now we think it might be a lorry that's actually overturned in the opposite lane. We think that's what's happened. And now we are approaching the scene of the incident. So we'll get to see for ourselves what's actually happened. Oh yes, it looks a little dramatic. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, it would appear that it is not an overturned lorry. It is, in fact, just a little bit of highway maintenance taking place. Okay, we're back on the road. We are going at our normal speed. <laughs> and once again, I will return you back to the studio. So we had a very eventful day yesterday, didn't we, Mr. Steve? We did. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very interesting because uh, Mr. Duncan's often filming when I'm driving, which is quite distracting. So uh, I, I'm always aware that I don't want to cause an accident myself with Mr. Duncan distracting me by talking on his phone Sorry. Uh, when I'm driving along. But yes, that's why I was cleaning the car, because when you visit your family, I don't know what it is, you don't like to arrive in a dirty car, because otherwise th your family see that as a sign that you're... Uh, you're a bit a bit of a lazy person and you're not really uh they, not they, they really think taking they, care mr. of your steve, life mr steve they think you're a failure they say your car is dirty oh dirty you, car there must be something wrong oh, there you must be a failure plus i don't want my <laughs> i don't want my mother getting in and out of a dirty car she might have nice clean clothes on and she might scrape her dress against the dirty paintwork and then uh, and then uh, that wouldn't be that wouldn't go down very well so you, you you want to impress when you go to your family yes you don't want your mother getting her her new dress all dirty exactly on your, on your filthy disgusting dirty car because it was raining it was dirty by the time we got there so it's pretty <laughs> pointless cleaning it the night before really i oh yes of course because we went to your mum's in banbury and I, I noticed that you you came back with a, an early christmas present yes so an early christmas present now are we going to see the present are we going to have a look at it now i want to see what it is because i'm very curious to find out i'll give you a clue it's something you put on your feet it's something you put on your feet what do you think mr steve's and, in, <laughs> and you wear it you wear them in the house and it keeps your feet nice and warm I don't give too many clues away <laughs> you just might as well say what it is now. all right they're slippers they're slippers yes they are slippers carpet there we go carpet slippers nice pair of slippers brand wow. new they've even still got the stuffing inside they've still got the thing inside to keep them in shape <laughs> oh my goodness they are C can we have another look there we go wow 
I must say they are they are really nice slippers. They're they, posh slippers. These are. I'll they don't look you. like they don't look like normal slippers. They look like very posh slippers. They're almost like house shoes. <laughs> Only the best for Mr. Steve. Well, I do deserve it. So the big question is, what what are you buying for your mother, or have you already bought? the present for your mum i can't say that in case she's watching do you think your mum watches this yes but somebody might be watching does, and they might tell my mother does, does does anyone does anyone we know watch us doing this i mean why would you do this if you had to put it with us in your real life why would you inflict us when we're not around i can't think of a reason why anyone that we know in our real lives would watch us as but but just in case there is anyone who really does know us in real life hello <laughs> thank you very much actually i can say what i did buy for one present for my mother because uh, she was there and i bought it uh and uh, she wanted a new one it's uh to uh, filter the water and soften the water to drink so it's a water filter uh for you know you put the water in and there's a little filter at the bottom and uh, then you've got pure water it takes all the chlorine and all the horrible taste out of the tap water that's nice well you know i'm you, you know me mr steve i'm very fussy about the way my take my tea tastes i don't like yes. i don't like it when someone makes a cup of tea for me and it tastes disgusting i can't stand it so quite often it's because the water is tainted it has maybe things in it that that that's sour or make the water taste very unpleasant and of course if you make a cup of tea with water that tastes bad of course the tea will also taste bad as well oh that's a very useful thing i always like yes. to buy gifts for people that are very useful i never like to buy things that are frivolous that's a great word frivolous something frivolous is meaningless or something that has no meaning or is very trivial something trivial something pointless something unimportant so yeah so i always like to buy something for, for as a gift <laughs> that's very useful oh we have the live chat by the way a lot of people like your car and they, they've asked if you are going to sell it actually i might be it's eight years old now that yes. car i was saying earlier i was telling everyone about your car because it looks brand new people think it's new but in fact it's nearly eight years old well i polish that i keep it nice and polished so that it looks new and it's done a hundred and sixty six thousand miles probably what's that two hundred thousand kilometers plus i would say i think it's so on a high mileage and uh, it's worn very well it does look very new so that car say. that car has been around the world uh, been right around the world with its distance about six maybe seven times i don't know the total difference the circumference around the earth i don't know what that would be maybe someone can tell us uh but it's done a lot of miles i've probably spent Ooh, over those eight years i've probably spent four years driving in the car <laughs> that's probably quite scary i don't think you are alone there i think a lot of people yes. a lot of people spend a lot of their time in their cars quite often sitting still in the traffic jam so i might be selling it so next they are, year they are often stuck in the traffic jam do you Traffic see what jam ja jam you see because we are talking about ah, food food ah. yeah you see what i did there a nice little segue did into you see what i did that topic. was very very slick a slick link because today we are talking about food apparently um <laughs> that i'm getting some information here i think this is information about the circumference of the planet earth ah it's very interesting this i wasn't expecting to say this today mm -hmm. apparently it's 40 40 000 kilometers 40 000 kilometers does that sound right that doesn't it sound probably does sound about right Forty thousand. that doesn't sound that doesn't sound like many kilometers that sounds about right to me oh, so okay. i've been around the earth 
five times five times my maths is correct in your car that's amazing it feels like it i had to have a lot of new tires in that time it would appear in your car has caused a lot of excitement today on the live <laughs> chat i wasn't expecting this um is there a reason why the driver is on the right side well it's because we drive on the opposite side of the road here we drive on the left whereas many people drive on the right so that's the reason mm -hmm. why your steering wheel is or it appears to be in the wrong place but it isn't we, we drive on the opposite side of the road which often causes a lot of horror for my viewers when they see you driving mr <laughs> steve because they think you're going the wrong way up the road <laughs> yes most uh, most countries around the world uh, drive on the uh the, the, on the right hand side but we drive on the left in the uk i don't i don't know why it's uh, it goes back a long way probably i think many years ago uh the rest of europe decided to drive on the re on the right but we decided to stick on the left can i just, just say i think we it's awkward i think mr steve it is a it is a <laughs> colonial thing there's a ladybird has just flown into your studio okay. and landed on the ceiling great <laughs> thanks we needed that information there's a bit of distraction there so um <laughs> so that's the reason why i think it's colonial british colonies i think or if you think of all the british colonies i think they all drive on the same side as the ro of the road as we do here in the uk i think so i'm sure someone is going to tell me now that i'm completely wrong about that but i i, th I think that's it's what some it's kind of it was some kind of uh, not competition but i think when it when it was decided which side of the road to drive on i think we deliberately went the opposite way to europe just to be awkward what, what do you mean competition or the other way around i don't mean competition i mean I think Europe either decided they were going to go on the opposite side to us or we decided to go on the opposite side of the road to them just to be awkward. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I, I think, I think it it's sort of dates back to this sort of friction between Europe and uh, and, uh, and and what used to be the British Empire. So, are you making this up? No, I think I, I think I think uh, it was deliberately uh, instigated that we wouldn't be driving on the same side of the road as as uh, as europe so so that's uh, what you're saying you're saying we, we did it just to just to annoy everyone else or they did it to annoy us i don't know which way it round it was <laughs> that's great it was it I, was we decided i think we were always driving on the left yeah. and so, then they so decided to drive on the right but we decided to just stick to where we were and and not change so so this, this basically <laughs> the next time someone asks me this i can say we do it because of spite probably spite that's it that's a let's great face it we've been at war with most of europe for, 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 for <laughs> until relatively that's, recently that's it. And, and we were about to be again after <gasps> brexit <laughs> exactly. maybe the, maybe well, there the you go you see there you, there no, you go we've voted what? to leave leave uh, europe because uh, there's always this friction between uh the uk and uh, and the rest of europe okay calm down we've got a lot to do here we we've have got, got a lot to do we've got a lot to do we've got to have have our snowy walk and also we've got to put the christmas lights on outside so we still have a lot to do so we're talking about food today and we mentioned earlier traffic jam it's traffic, traffic jam, jam. So mm -hmm. when the the traffic stops because there is there are too many cars or maybe something is stopping the traffic from moving we can say that you have a traffic jam and we are talking about food now i believe that you have some food idioms for us right now they're right here in front of me mr duncan well I please prepared them earlier please show us should we start with the first one that would be a good idea right okay i'm looking at right okay then so uh how about this one for starters cry over spilt milk or spilled milk to cry over to spilled cry over spilled milk so if in american english they tend to say spilled and in british english we often say spilt spilt so cry over spilt milk that's to complain about something that has already happened it's no use crying over spilt milk so if something happens that uh, maybe an accident like spilling milk 
and then you keep talking about it all the time there's nothing you can do about it but uh, so that's what it means when you say you're crying over spilt milk so you are getting upset over something maybe also something that you can't reverse or can't change yes it's happened you can't change it you've spilt the milk you can't do anything about it it was an accident uh, so that's it so it's it's a bit like if something went wrong during your show it was possibly not your fault it, it often happens very upset about it, it happens a lot like last week when, when my computer decided not to work so yes I, I i got very angry last week but mr steve turned around and he said i don't remember what i said well grow up don't no. cry over spilt milk oh i see i get it now yes i said mr duncan don't worry it's no use crying over spilt milk What's that? <laughs> I didn't see what you were trying to do then, <laughs> Mr. Duncan. Moving on, moving on to the next one. Obviously, I, Mr. Duncan's having a bit of a seizure. I'm having so a nervous breakdown let's here. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> oh, I, I, this is an appropriate one to, to put on next because obviously I've upset Mr. Duncan now. <laughs> so maybe I need to uh, to butter up. Oh. to mr duncan butter butter up or butter someone up so when you say butter you mean you mean like the thing that you spread on your bread yes Sp thing that you spread on on your bed so bread <laughs> butter <up. laughs> or on your bed <laughs> <laughs> some people do get butter on their bed for various reasons maybe they're maybe they're eating a pancake in bed yes. and they, they drop it and then butter gets on the bed I, no. i'm often i often toss a toss a pancake in bed there's no answer to that butter up it means to flatter someone in order to get a favor or friendship to flatter someone oh mr duncan you look 10 years younger have you lost weight <laughs> oh i do love working with you <laughs> oh can you uh, give me a lift into town later oh i see ah yes you see i was buttering you up flattering you in order to get something out of you Mm. So oh, you Mr. Duncan, you look wonderful today. <laughs> and then later on, I'll say, oh, oh, are you going to cook tonight? Why don't you cook tonight? Oh, cook that lovely meal. It's gorgeous, that meal you make, Mr. Duncan. You are trying to butter me I'm up. I'm trying to butter you up. Because you want a favour from me. I so want a favour. So you do something nice to get the favour later. So you can do that to your boss at work. Mm -hmm. That's very common. For people to butter up their boss oh you're a wonderful i love working for you you're just so kind and considerate and you go on and on like this and then later on you might go oh I, I, do you think i could have a pay rise <laughs> or something like that i think i think we've explained that to it butter up to its ultimate point right next one by next the way one. we're talking about food idioms today that the, the theme has been food and there is a lesson underneath this video all about food a very long lesson talking mm. about food and also earlier today we had a look a brief look at that lesson so here we go mr steve can we have another one of your lovely lovely I food think i'm idioms? going to do one more i've got about 10 here and then i've got a little sort of competition for people okay we'll to... do that after the snowy walk so one more right. idiom and then we'll go for a snowy walk <laughs> okay <laughs> well uh, you uh, you of course have taken over there and decided to do that because you are uh, the big cheese <laughs> that is true <laughs> like the way i said uh, i am the big cheese you are I the am, big cheese i am the head honcho i am the boss i am numero uno an important person the leader the boss you are the big cheese of the english lessons on youtube mr duncan and uh, so you're the boss for example you could say uh, oh my uncle is a big cheese in this company so be nice to him so i have to be nice to mr duncan all week in order to uh, uh appear on this show so not only were you buttering me up you were buttering up the big cheese buttering up the big cheese <laughs> a lot of dairy products there <laughs> a lot of dairy <laughs> that is very true so big cheese yes we do use that the big cheese 
you know i was getting very excited last week mr steve i was getting very excited you know why because <sighs> it looked as if we were going to get some snow and i thought to myself are we going to have some snow and i remembered that i made a lesson all about that particular subject so now we are going to have a little break and we are going to have a look at a lesson that i made where i was taking a lovely walk in the snow do you want to come with me mr steve i will and then i've got my my little competition afterwards yeah Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Today I'm feeling very excited. Do you know why? Is it because I have won the lottery? No. Is it because I'm getting married? Oh no. Is it because I'm having boiled cabbage for dinner? Well, it could be, but it isn't. No, the reason why I'm so excited today is because the snow is coming. The weather forecasters have predicted that a heavy fall of snow will occur over England tomorrow. As you have no doubt already guessed, I love snow. I love the way the snow falls from the sky and the way it looks when it covers the landscape but most of all I love the way it crunches under your feet when you walk on it. Right now there is no snow here but it is very cold, about six below zero at the moment. So all I can do now is keep my frozen fingers crossed and hope that tomorrow the sky will be full of snow and that it all falls right here. Whether the weather will be mild and sunny, whether the weather will be cold and chilly, whether the weather will be windy and wet, I wonder what weather we'll be getting next. So the weather forecast was correct. It has started to snow. How much will we get? How heavy will it be? We'll just have to wait and see. The following morning arrives and the snow has stopped falling.
I have decided to come and take a walk around one of my most favourite places in the area where I live, Baggeridge Park in Staffordshire. Shall I eat this? Shall I? Shall I have some? There is a belief that you should never ever eat snow, especially if it's yellow. Well, perhaps you would eat it if your life depended on it. The feeling of walking out on a chilly day is like no other. It's a refreshing and invigorating experience. If you wrap up warm, you can walk and walk. It is always good to know what the weather will be like. Of course, accurately predicting the changes in the weather is not easy. There are many changes to consider. The change in temperature. The change in air pressure, which causes the force of the wind to alter. And of course, the direction of the wind. The likelihood of extreme weather events, such as typhoons and hurricanes, can be predicted quite well these days. The study of the atmospheric conditions, including the weather, is called meteorology. A person who is involved in doing this is called a meteorologist. The weather is often used as a subject for small talk. Asking someone about the weather or making a general comment on the climate or conditions makes for a convenient opener to a conversation. There's one thing to remember about walking on snow and that is to make sure that you wear shoes that have very thick rugged soles. Unlike me today, I'm wearing shoes that are smooth and flat and needless to say, I keep slipping everywhere. Okay, we're going to cut that short. That is an excerpt from one of my lessons all about going out for a lovely snowy walk. I'm sorry I had to cut that short, but Mr. Steve is literally, he's champing at the bit. <laughs> a lot of people say that that isn't real, but it is a real expression. You champ at the bit. Isn't that true? Yes, that means you're very eager. Uh, to carry on or, or to start something you're very eager it was very violent just he got very violent he was saying look 
look just cut that stupid snow off i don't want to <laughs> see snow anymore i want i want i want to be back on i want to i want to come back onto the internet and talk live well, because uh, because yes. you've got something you want to play is that right i've got something i want to play yes oh uh well i was going to show another idiom first okay then. because i thought it was related to that it was that made me feel very cold watching that so here's another one warm as toast mm. warm as toast which means very warm and cozy the house was as warm and warm as toast after we came in from the snow yeah. there we go i okay, thought that would then. relate to your last video there as warm as toast as warm as toast i like that one actually yes because because i like toast as well so so being warm and eating toast two of my favorite things you can be snuggled up in bed as warm as toast i love that yes that's a great that's expression. A nice expression is there anything that that uh, could be the opposite though to do with food about being warm or cold the opposite of warm is cold so mm -hmm. anything cold as ice cold as cold ice. as ice because you can eat ice so ice is food you can eat ice so yes mm. or of course there is <laughs> as cool as a cucumber you've just ruined something that i've got coming up later oh i see <laughs> am i am i now ruining your bit right that one's out <laughs> right i'm sorry about that that one's out <laughs> this is just you, are you going to tear it up for Mr. dramatic Duncan has just ruined one of my idioms are you going to tear it up for dramatic effect i've just screwed it up into a ball and thrown it over my shoulder you should you should have you should have torn it or into pieces you, you should tear it into pieces and then just throw it at me throw it straight into my face you're too far away <laughs> i've got a little sort of competition here something that i can interact with the viewers yes why not yes so you've got uh, is it just before um, you do that i also have a little competition ongoing um the mystery idioms i'm going to show them very quickly we have 20 minutes to go before we finish today and there is the second mystery idiom and there is the first one two mystery idioms just say what you see they are both well-known expressions in the english language back to mr steve so you want to play a little game now yes uh, well I'm, I'm going to the, show a sentence and then there's going to be four possible answers to the the gap in the sentence so it's a it's a food related idiom but you've got to you've got to put the missing piece into the sentence so you are you are asking the viewers to fill in the blank fill in the blank now i've got to make sure i put this up so that everyone can see it tell me mr duncan is that that's right? lovely and clear yes okay so, so let's let's read what that says please do not something about my plans to, to get, get married, married next year. year so please, please do, do not, not what a hit the source about my plans to get married next year b get an egg on your face about my plans to get married next year please do not spill the beans about my plans to get married next year or is it d please do not butter up about my plans to get married oh, next I year. See. Do you see so, what I'm doing? I see what you're doing. So please Fill do in not the gap. Please Is it do a, not. Yes, B, okay. I think C we've got it, Mr. Steve. <laughs> I think I think we all understand. Really? This isn't necessarily a sort of uh, quantum physics we're dealing with here. Ah. <laughs> it's filling the bloody blank. Fill the blank in. Fill in the blank. <laughs> send in your answers now please scribble away <laughs> scribble away on the chat <laughs> please so what do you think what is the correct answer there the missing phrase and the phrase of course has something to do with food so please do not something about my plans to get married next year now it sounds to me as if it might be something that you don't want people to talk about julie g has yes got it right uh, irem or irem 
thank you very much for your guests and also Jamelia and Akbar and also Nora well done Nora and Alice as well has given the correct answer and what is the answer mr steve the answer is please do not spill the beans spill the beans what does that About mean my plans to get married next year it means don't tell anyone don't spill the beans don't tell people don't reveal the don't secret reveal the secret do not reveal the fact that i yes. am getting married next year you must not spill the beans you could say that about lots of things and of course if someone has already given away a secret you can say that they spilled the beans they spilled the beans about their holiday plans they spilled the beans about their their new business venture yes. some someone is asking what does hit the sauce mean hit the sauce means uh, to uh, drink alcohol if you hit the sauce it means you're getting drunk if if you if you hit the hit the sauce it means that you get drunk you 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 drink some uh, alcohol mr duncan is uh, going to do that after this show there's another one on there that we haven't talked about as well get egg on your face Oh, I see. Get egg on your face. Get egg on your face. What's okay. that, Mr. Duncan? Are you going to mention that later? No, that isn't in one of my oh. pre-prepared okay, then. Cards. So what? So what does that mean then? If you get egg on your face, I just asked you, but never mind. Oh, you just asked me. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry. No, it means yes. To be yes. Okay. No, I'll do it then. No, you asked Come me. On. I don't mind. I I'm up for the challenge. No problem. I'm like Rocky, Rocky, in not not the first Rocky not not the not the latest rocky the latest rocky is all old in <laughs> but the first one the first rocky i'm like him very strong and tough okay <laughs> so, <laughs> egg on your face you could say yes it means uh to be i want to say humiliated to be humiliated or embarrassed by something or maybe something that you've done Yes. or maybe something that has backfired so you tried to do yes. something bad to someone and then that thing came back to to bite you or or to to do harm to yourself so you ended up with egg on your face you look foolish you look foolish you could try something new and it all went wrong i could appear on your your show or you could be doing your show it all goes wrong you look stupid you put a word up you spelt it incorrectly you could say that you've got egg on your face mm. and i think i don't know where that comes from I, I probably might have something to do with with uh dating back to times when people had made mistakes you used to throw rotten eggs at them yes so it probably uh it relates back to that i i think they should bring that back you know i think mm. they should bring back uh, throwing eggs and rotten tomatoes at people who have done bad things i think because in in the town centre where we live there are some old-fashioned stocks that people used to have to put their hands through and their feet and then people would throw rotten tomatoes and, and rotten food at them uh, as punishment and I, th I think that's I think they should bring that back you know for people who have who have committed crimes and then you you just humiliate them you leave them with egg on their face what a horrible world you're picturing mr duncan of punishing people by throwing eggs at them <laughs> it could of course mean that if you're trying to break an egg and it goes wrong you get egg on your face it could be you know you, you, that, that something's gone wrong it might not be that we're throwing eggs at people but we don't ne always know the exact derivation of these phrases we don't uh, really know quite often actually it's very interesting whilst we're talking about that because quite often in english there are words that that have appeared but no one knows where they came from no no one knows the actual history of the word they just magically appear and then no one knows for example here's a good one do you know why we call junk mail spam do you know mr steve is that because spam is a very inferior quality meat product you are not going to believe it but the word spam was adopted 
to mean junk mail because of Monty Python oh it's that, true uh, I'm not joking that is actually where it comes from so when you talk about spam you, you the junk email it actually originated in a sketch from Monty Python's Flying Circus a TV show a mm -hmm. British show where they have a scene in a cafe and, and the person working there reads out the menu and all of the things start off normally but eventually everything becomes spam spamming eggs spamming chips spamming beans spam spamming toast spam 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 and then in the end it's just spam and spam that, of course as i've already described is a inferior meat product that's ah, sold in tin but the derivation the, the, the where it derives from comes from the thing that's just very annoying and unwanted because no one really likes eating spam no. so the joke is that no one likes to eat spam and that's Which why is there is a joke there because no one really likes eating spam it isn't very nice food horrible the cheap so, yeah. mashed up meat product so there it is so that's why we call junk mail unwanted emails uh, spam we call it spam because of monty python it's true you you check tomorrow you have a look and uh, you'll see i'm right oh i believe you mr duncan i believe you i'm not cheesed off you're not oh i see <laughs> oh i see what you've done yeah there. i did that you are not cheesed off. i'm not cheesed off there's so, another idiom food related idiom cheesed off very good annoyed so if you are annoyed at someone if you are annoyed or, at something or someone mr duncan's pupils were cheesed off that he didn't do his live english show last week don't you start <laughs> i've had everybody all week people have been asking mr duncan here yeah, mr duncan where are you where are you are you still alive have you died they were cheesed off they were annoyed as was i waiting preparing all week to appear on your show only to have it cancelled at the last minute you were very disappointed i was cheesed off <laughs> and so were your viewers and i hope you've apologized profusely uh. <laughs> right but that doesn't mean necessarily that you are a bad apple oh very good how they're linking in oh this is just sublime this is very slick are you a bad apple or a bad egg you can use it either in two ways a bad apple or a bad egg okay so means, what does it mean it means a bad person a bad person so a bad egg or a bad apple is is someone that might be untrustworthy might not have a good character they might be up to bad things doing bad things so yes. you might describe that person as a bad apple or a bad egg you might say your friend might say well stay away from him he's a bad apple hmm. or, or a bad bad egg you can use it the other way around you, this is being used in the negative which it is normally used in but you can use it in the positive and say that someone is a good egg a good egg a good egg but not good apple not good apple you would say well he's a good egg somebody at work that trustworthy reliable nice sort of person alice asks nothing exciting just a good egg alice asks is cheesed off the same as browned off yes it is yes it's, it's, you're you're annoyed you're upset uh marta marta has used a swear word uh but of course it is english um and that's what we're talking about today we'll have so anything marta marta Rame Kate says pissed off yes you can be you can be uh, annoyed you can be cheesed off browned off yes it, it is possible but this this is obviously related to food whereas pissed off <laughs> would be related to <laughs> well not food okay we can only say that twice so that's it we've used it up YouTube 
will only allow me to swear twice so that's it we've used them all up which is just as well because we only have nine minutes left i've got another quick competition quick competition okay another one is this another missing word another missing word fill in the gap here we go <gasps> i can hardly wait the man or woman is a very good worker and is definitely what the man woman is a very good worker and is definitely a souped up b worth his or her salt c nutty as a fruit cake <laughs> or a hot potato Ooh, i could the just man woman is a very good worker and is definitely souped up worth his salt nutty as a fruit cake or a hot potato i could just eat a hot potato right now answers fast we haven't got much time the clock is ticking what's the answer what's the answer to that a good worker and is definitely what <laughs> well no one is answering so let's just wait shall we we'll wait we'll, we'll wait, wait and i'll put no, another no one problem. up we'll wait we'll wait for a second so who oh here we go we've got some answers coming through now yeah what's the answer julie g says d hold hot it up. potato really a person is a hot potato you're a reliable person reliable at work you can be relied upon trusted you are what well you're not nutty as a fruitcake that oh, wouldn't work would it here we go we have george george and nora both say is this person worth his or her salt yes is that what it is that is what it is yes. if you're a good worker you're worth your worth your salt if you are worth your salt it means you are valued or you have usefulness yes because salt of course hundreds of years ago used to be a very valuable commodity it used to be used like money as currency so if you had lots of salt you were worth something because so salt was you know not easy to come by so if you sweated that was like an atm machine people <laughs> would go and lick you yeah they would go go but well, they'd steal your sweat because of course sweat contains a lot of salt and so cows lick each other for salt don't they you have to farmers have to put salt blocks out in the field what <laughs> how did this, you get it just goes off in all different directions how did you get from from that to to, to, to cows licking each other <laughs> I have absolutely there we go. no. But there's other ones on there which we haven't explained. I have, oh, let's have a look then. Souped up. What souped is souped? Up. So is souped something up. is souped up. I've actually got that one here. Souped up. That's something made faster or more powerful, or something that is made to appear to look more powerful by changing or adding something. Usually. This is to do with cars so you can soup up a car you can soup up a car so you make it faster or more powerful by for example but it's not always that you've actually made it more powerful it may appear to be so for example my neighbor souped up his car by fitting bigger wheels uh -huh. and a larger exhaust uh -huh. so it might not which could be just cosmetic things it looks more powerful but isn't necessarily it's just flashier it's, it's just bigger wheels it's bigger been tires. it's been souped up it's been souped up of course uh, has, you can genuinely your, soup it up has your car been souped up no it is <laughs> standard specification it has not been or had any modifications <laughs> so how much how much do you want for your car because a few people have put offers in for really? your car they they, they 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 want to know how much you want for it uh, i was thinking of putting it this on is eBay. a very strange turn of events <laughs> because i wasn't expecting this to turn into a used car lot to how be much honest. do you think an eight year old mercedes with 166 thousand miles or 200 kilometers i think it's more than 200 kilometers <laughs> on the clock is actually worth uh 135 pounds you're a bit on the low side a Hi, thousand and thirty five pounds <laughs> i think it's probably worth about 
three thousand pounds ah, second hand so it's it's a second hand car and you you had it virtually from new because it was uh what was it had it been used as a demonstration model or yes something? i got it second hand i always buy a car second hand because you get a lot of money off uh so yes it was an ex demonstrator uh -huh. so it's been used in the showroom to demonstrate or show potential buyers what the car was like so it had done about nine thousand miles when i bought it and now it's done 166 I, I love i love to think now well, what i'm thinking now is there are people actually writing these details down and they're going to try and buy your car i i love this idea maybe this is something <laughs> we can start every week we oh. can we can get things for sale uh, and we can we can sort of sell stuff i could be <laughs> like amazon dunkazon <laughs> it's never failed an mot which is the annual road test that you require to put it on the road it's i wish never i could failed. say that i wish i could say the same thing about myself i have failed many mot's when i've i've had my my service as how about were. this one one la have we got time for one last one come on yes one more there we go put all your eggs put, in one basket put all your eggs in one basket what does that mean that means to risk everything at oh. once put all your eggs in one basket i didn't want to risk all of my investments in tech shares i don't want to risk all my investments in tech shares i don't want to put all my eggs in one basket that's it so so, so don't so if you're doing something them. if you're doing something risky um maybe it's best not to gamble everything on one thing on one thing so yes i like that one that's a good shares, one that's a good one so if you've got shares you want to uh, have your shares invested in lots of different investment classes you don't want them all in one area for example you seem very knowledgeable about this <laughs> not really <laughs> but uh, you have to you've had well, have we had that one already cool as a cucumber i did mention that I unflustered can't. cool calm i i passed my driving test fi first time i was as cool as a cucumber during the test okay so very very sure very confident yes just staying calm staying cool cucumbers are cool you put them on your eyes to to get rid of the bags under your eyes they feel very cool don't they against your skin so julie cool as a cucumber wait there we've got we're running out of time here steve julie asks what about hot potato what hot is it? potato hot potato hot potato that's something that's like a a topic that is controversial for example um uh the government is uh, a hot potato could be they want to build a nuclear power plant uh a few miles up the road somewhere close to you so that will be a, a hot potato for the government or the local council because it's a it's a very something very controversial hot so if someone wants to build a nuclear so something else or they wanted to build a bypass road you that see, one could be a hot potato it's a you, subject do you see this what i'm doing here that means that means go faster <laughs> i think i was far that's as bad as fast as i go that definitely wasn't the concise version i made a meal out of that you certainly Mr. did Duncan. i think we've made a meal out of this whole show today it's Make almost, a meal out of it's almost time to go take longer than you should do or is necessary it's almost time to say Can't goodbye leave it but before we go mystery idioms are going to be revealed and here is the first one for those who are interested or still awake it cost an arm and a leg the meaning to pay a very high price for something a very expensive item can be described costing an arm and a leg the thing you bought was very expensive it cost an arm and a leg I love that illustration. It's brilliant. <laughs> the guy, he's standing there and he's, he's, he has one leg missing and one arm missing, but he's holding the missing limbs in his hand. Very, very, very lovely. <laughs> Finally, the uh, mystery idiom number two is 
I thought this was very easy no one actually no one guessed the mystery idioms today I don't know why maybe they're maybe maybe I was doing too many things at once today a shot in the dark to make a wild guess about something without knowing the full facts or having all the information you have no clue as to the answer so you have a shot in the dark you make a wild guess did you know those mr steve i i do now yes that's good <laughs> very nice i've very just we never made reference to uh, to all these these lovely birds behind me today no we? I, well we can't see them at the moment there they are there, they are. Oh. there aren't they lovely something very colorful oh. <laughs> hello <laughs> isn't that lovely well, oh. what, what, which which particular bird is that which bird is it uh i think that's a goldfinch is that a goldfinch it is it's a goldfinch it's a goldfinch it has the red face the red face the bird with the red face is the goldfinch that's an easy one that's very easy it's broken it doesn't it that one doesn't sing anymore that's another easy one that's a very easy one oh but so that I'll see is a, you later that is a black bird <laughs> and the previous one the green one is a green finch green finch they don't look like quite like this in real life no and, and they're not <laughs> stuffed <laughs> but but if you squeeze them they do sing <laughs> if you squeeze them very tightly they will sing they reveal all their secrets they will sing and poo on your hand if someone uh, if someone is singing means they're revealing all their secrets yes you sing talking. like a bird sing like a bird you give all the secrets away you reveal all of the secrets you sing like a bird talking of birds this ladybird has just flown into your camera wow it's almost on the lens my goodness this might be yes. a, a an amazing moment of time it might it might crawl it, across it's about to I, it's about to crawl across the uh, it's about to crawl across the lens there we go <laughs> it's going right around the outside of the oh, lens no i can't see it <laughs> it's not there mr steve it's there i can it see will have it. to go across the middle we need uh, we need uh, i can't encourage it to do that this is fascinating by the way that would have been very interesting if it had walked right across the lens can i just thank google for researching and developing all of the wonderful technology that has allowed mr steve to show us <laughs> a ladybird there we walking. go just to, oh huh? just oh it's gone it's gone well oh, yeah, it's flown onto the light okay this is really good this is great what an Thanks, exciting Mrs. end that might be the most interesting thing that's never never happened, happened. that's <laughs> never happened yes so we'll see you later mr steve we are going to turn the christmas lights on right now <gasps> are you excited yes i'm always excited about christmas lights and you do put on a good show yes we did actually turn them on last night so this yes. is actually something we recorded last night but we did turn the lights on and now they are twinkling outside and the good thing is that the nights get very dark early so in a few moments i will be putting the lights on for tonight but last night we did it we turned them on for the first time we will see you next week mr steve bye bye thank and you very much for having me again and uh happy english everyone very bye lovely bye. we are now going to switch on the christmas lights mr S mr steve disappeared so quickly there <laughs> it's okay i can come back i'm still here <laughs> you've gone now that's it oh. you only get one chance to leave <laughs> you only get one chance around here here we go then last night we decided to switch on the christmas lights and that's what we are going to show you right now thanks a lot for watching for the past two hours and six minutes wow i'm actually doing overtime <gasps> amazing we will see you next week mr steve and myself will we we will be back at two o'clock 2 p.m uk time and now before we go let's turn on those christmas lights 
So, here we go. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. After days and days of preparation. Weeks. Weeks, in fact, we are now ready to turn on the outside Christmas lights. Are you ready, Mr. Steve? It's exciting! Are you ready? I am ready. What I'm... do I do? What do I do? We are now going to press this switch here. We are going to flick the switch. Flick the switch. And once we flick the switch, all of the outside lights will come on and the house will be lit with beautiful twinkling Christmas lights. So, Shall we do it now? Let's do it, Mr. Duncan. Here we go then. Get your finger ready. We're going to count from five to zero. Does that sound good? Five to zero. I can do that. <laughs> good. Here we go then. Everybody join in as well. Five, five four, four, three, two, two one, one, zero. The lights are on. Let's have a look outside, shall we? Look at it! Look at it! That's so beautiful! 